Hi, welcome into my studio and on this video I'm going to be using a different type of paper. It's not going to be pastel matte which is going to surprise and shock quite a few of you I'm sure but it's nice to try out some different things from uh, time to time. Now this paper is called Fisher 400 and it's a sanded paper and by that it means if you if you receive it if you buy a paper like this it actually looks and feels very much like a fine sand paper. Now there are a few versions of this out there, a few different companies. UART is another very popular one. Now the UART comes in different grades, so different um, roughness and smoothness, 800 being the um, smoothest. The 400 on the Fisher, it's around about middle of the, the range I suppose, going a bit towards the, the uh, finer, the smoother side of the surface. But make no mistake, this is nothing like pastel matte when you feel it at all. When you move your finger across it, it grabs your finger. As I said, it is like sandpaper. But my whole idea with it is it should take many, many more layers. That should help with detail as well. So that's the plan. Now, one of the problems with these papers, they've, they're a bit flexible. They're rigid enough, but the UART in particular has a tendency to... Um, warp or to, to be a bit uh, concave, convex on it, a bit bent and uh, the fissure can do the same as well and don't forget pastel matte as well can, uh, can actually bend a little bit so it's nice to keep it flat and firm. Now with pastel matte we can buy pastel matte board so it's basically sit from Clairefontaine it's the pastel matte and it's already on a rigid board and it's my preferred surface to work on but it's really expensive. A cheap way to do it is to actually um, stick down your surface, so it could be pastel mat paper, could be the UART, could be this fissure, whatever, onto a rigid board. Now you could use a self-adhesive foam board, but my preferred method is using a mount board, a self-adhesive repositionable mount board that I get from De La Rowney, and no doubt there's lots of other companies that make something similar as well. Now the fact it's repositionable means if we misalign it a little bit we can actually peel it back off and put it back on there. And it's also specifically made for being against artwork so it's pH neutral as well. So let's see how I stick it down onto this Fisher 400 paper. So on top that's the Fisher 400 paper the right end is obviously on the back side and there's that Dela mount board underneath. On top you can see that's my pastel box, it's heavy and it's a straight edge. That means I can put the two papers up against each other and I know they're going to be in line. So it's easy to peel this top surface, this release paper, back from the Dela mount board. So the sticky side is there and I'm only pulling it back just a small amount for the moment. Now I already cut this to size using a, a Stanley knife, a blade and a metal ruler. So I've just butted it up against my wooden board but any straight edge that's not going to move will work just fine. Then I can put the Fisher 400 right up against it and I know it's in line. And I'm just pushing down, not too hard, on that top surface. Then I can pull my pastel case out of the way because I won't be needing that anymore. So the top edge is now stuck down and I'm just going to pull a bit more of this release paper back off. Now I could have pulled it all off in one go but I'd rather do it a little bit at a time so I can gradually press down on the paper. Now because this is a sandpaper it's very difficult to smooth out. With pastel mat it's super easy to do this. And that's what I've been doing to the last couple of uh, drawings I've done. If I haven't used pastel mat board I've been putting this backing board on there. It makes it lovely and rigid. And as I said, we could reposition it and remove the drawing from there if we wanted to. But it's perfect for the framer to actually mount your artwork like this. And I'm just bringing it down to the edge. I'll smooth it out. Then I'll trim that edge off. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, 
birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, it's on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well. And we've just designed a brand new companion website for it. So if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very, very difficult to navigate around, we've got this free website that comes with it. All the videos are now just a single click away. Couldn't be any easier than it is. I've also got my site, jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of tutorial videos, DVD discs and downloads on there. And if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.